Okay, here's another video in the Sheldon playlist. Sheldon has the laptop back at his home office now, and we're going to do a little orientation session about the changes that I made on it. So I'm going to punch over here and bring Sheldon up on screen. There you are. Hi, Sheldon. Hello there. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Uh, give me a give me a little sound check there. S speak up again. We got a testing one, two, three, testing one, two. Yeah, three. I'm wondering, I'm looking to see if I can raise your volume a little bit. Um, although, I guess you know what I might, I don't know how loud I am over the system. Let me go check this. That might be all it was. Go ahead and give me a sound check again. You know, I, let me let me raise it on my end. Would that help? Uh, you're raising the what? My volume. My volume? No, mm -hmm. I don't think that's going to matter. Okay. You're going to hear me louder. All right. So, Okay, I think we're good. I think we're good. Great. Okay, so I gave the computer back to you. You just turned it on uh, some number of minutes ago and got the webcam set up. And so now I'm going to show you a little bit about um, some changes to it. Now this this is your old laptop. We have not we've not implemented the new laptop yet because we had to fix some things with the old laptop before we can even do a transition. So uh, let's see, I'm going to punch up your computer here. And all right, so one of the problems with your old computer was, and still is a problem, is the way Outlook was configured. It was really causing some uh, uh, troubles in the sense that um, you have an email account that's hosted by Google. And there is a application that Google provides to synchronize the email messages and contacts and calendar items that are hosted by Google to get them synchronized by Outlook, you have to have this third application. And your computer had this application and it was designed for a, a small amount of data stored on your laptop. But over the years, I'm suspecting that the amount that was allowed on your laptop has been increased it started out as one gigabyte, then it went to one, two gigabytes, and then four gigabytes. And your old laptop is currently set on unlimited, and your locally stored email has risen to 49 gigabytes, which is, <laughs> your computer's having a hard time handling all that. It's a heck of a lot of emails. Yeah. Okay. So, it, so it was running really slow in Outlook, plus Outlook had, the synchronization had a couple of calendar item errors that were failing to synchronize. So your computer was over and over trying to re-synchronize those. So anytime you had Outlook open, that was causing extra sluggishness. Also, there was three email messages stuck in the Outbox in Outlook that had been sitting in there for, I think the most recent was weeks. And I think there was one that was a few months that it's been stuck in there and it hasn't gone out. So Outlook kept trying to resend it. So that causes your computer to retry, retry, retry. And that was causing sluggishness. So the synchronizing Outlook to a Google hosted account really should be restricted to times when you absolutely have to have Outlook. And I think at this, my, at, at this point in my awareness, of your work that you had more of a comfort level with Outlook rather than a requirement for it. You're absolutely correct, Doug. So I have made some adjustments in your web browser to make the Google hosted email look more similar to Outlook than what you have seen in the past. And I'm also going to show you how to interact with your calendar and contacts through the web interface. Now, if you still don't like that, when we migrate to your new computer, if we do indeed do that, we could still set up that synchronization between the Google hosting and Outlook, but we will have the opportunity to reset it to that one gigabyte limit. So it won't be so sluggish, mm -hmm. but it still can be prone to these errors that are still happening. So let's get busy and go show you how to do that. So. We're going to start by opening uh, Google Chrome. Now you've got a little bit of an issue with your mouse there, the way you're set up. Would you prefer I click on it or? No, I should be able to do it. Okay, go ahead and launch Google Chrome. And 
And I'm going to maximize the screen on the video so people don't see the border of my computer surrounding yours. It looks like so, a, a, number of, a number of things going here. But, yes. But. Uh, let me explain what I've got. Is I have automatically, when you launch Google Chrome, I've got the mouse for a minute. It's opening these four tabs. This one is your inbox for email. This one is your calendar. This one is your contacts. And this one would be your basic web browsing mm -hmm. if you want to go somewhere. So this is the way I have mine set up. Now, this layout is more similar to what your Outlook layout was than the default Gmail setup. So you have your inbox over here. You have your listings of emails here. You have your preview area over here. So if you have clicked on an email over here, you would be able to see it here. And then over here on your Outlook setup, you, had a, you have a calendar that sticks open. I can't make this one stick, but when you click on that, it drops down the calendar. Now, I don't know if you even cared about that in Outlook, but this is just as similar as I could get the Gmail interface to look um, in comparison to Outlook. Yes, well, you know, in Outlook, uh, I did have that calendar there. It was always nice to, it would be a reminder, especially I could see the first one or two items. So if I knew it was Doug's birthday, I could uh, respond appropriately or whoever's birthday it was or whatever meeting I might have. So that was nice to have. But as I'm looking at this entire setup, uh, I can see, you know, how you, you've been able to make it look uh, like Outlook. Um, if I uh, if if I was uh, hadn't been with hadn't been with Outlook for a while and came back to it, I'd still think I was into it. So uh, it looks very good, very nice. Good. So let me point out another feature about this calendar site over here. When I came to realize what it's doing, I kind of thought it's I, I kind of like it really. Hmm. I don't use it for that, but over here it's showing your upcoming calendar items mm -hmm. so this is for today and then thursday and if you come up to this calendar and click on let's say the 23rd well now it's showing you things from the that's the 24th there i guess and then yes thursday march 25th so without even switching to the calendar you see some things here now let me point out some of these are in blue some of these are in green and what we see here kind of seems like a duplication. Well, we're going to see why that is in a minute. Up here, this next tab is the calendar tab. Boy, I'm hearing a lot of thunder over here where I am. Are you? I can see, I'm looking out the window and I see a very ominous looking sky. So it's a uh, yeah, yeah. hail over here earlier today. Yeah. Gee, I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, make a hit a couple buttons here and see if I can show a little bit what's going on outside my window. You're not seeing this right now, but it's on the video. I have my windows covered normally because the daylight is too strong, but this storminess out there is yeah. uh, not so bright. Well, I don't think they can tell quite so well through the camera what's going on. But anyway, <laughs> uh, back to uh, your computer. So I want to go to the calendar up here. So I click on that, and this shows a calendar layout from Google. And it's the same calendar items that you were seeing in Outlook. It's a little bit different in the way it shows your different calendars. These color codes correspond to these different calendars that are selected over here. So if we remove all these excess check marks, we lose those other calendar items. We get down to here, and now we're only seeing your calendar. I still see the purple one. Let's scroll down here and see if there's another one down here somewhere. Well, what is that? All I see is blue on my end here. You see blue? These yeah. don't all look a different shade to you over here? You know, it may be a different shade, but it but it's just basically a lighter blue to me. Yeah, I think that's just because those are in the past because here's yeah. today, yeah. so these over here look uh, more clearly blue. These ones over here look like a purple to me. Yeah. So if I remove this check mark, 
yeah, they all go away. So those are all on your calendar. Yep. So if we come back here to the email, uh, we're still seeing those different colors. I thought that was going to, when we took away Corinna's calendar. Oh, here's select calendars. Maybe that does it. Yeah, okay. So you can choose which calendars here. So there's the green one is Corinna's calendar. So if we take that off, that removes the green ones. And where did I lose that? There they are. Okay. So, so now the green ones are gone. Very good. I really all I need is mine to be good. Okay. Yeah. All right. So there's there's the calendar layout and then this next tab is your contacts. Yeah. These would be the same contacts that you have in con in um, now, Outlook. Is there another way to, to, to have a different layout here for these contacts? That yeah, in Outlook, you had them as cards. Yes. And I looked around a little bit to to find how to turn this to cards, and I did not find that. So I and I I didn't look as quite long enough to satisfy myself that there isn't a way to do it. Um, but I, I did go through a fair amount and I think I even did this, like we go over here to a new tab for your Google search and say, let's see, Gmail contacts display as cards. See if that gets us anything. Card update or extension updates the little card you see in Gmail when you mouse over someone's name. No, create a contact card. View group and share contacts. Contacts app, move important contacts. Yeah, I'm not seeing that at the moment. So I'm gonna, for the moment, say that that's just kind of our, on our list of requests. Well, what I'll do is, uh, and Corinna's not available now, but I'll see how it's set up on her computer. Yeah, so that'd be good. Mail for, for ages. And then the other thing is then if I'm, oh, creating contact, I see in the upper left-hand corner if I'm creating right. contact. Yeah. Now, here's another piece, uh, this merge and fix. This is indicating there's 307 contacts that Google sees as potential uh, duplicates. Yes. So you can go through these one at a place, one at a time and select merge or dismiss. That would leave both of them existing. Or I think click on either one of them to make that, that one, you know, take precedence. So if I, if I merge, Doug, uh, it would take all of the relevant information, put it into one, right? Correct. Right, right. It would take all, all of the, the mismatch information and jam them together. So there's the potential that one of these is obsolete and one of them is more current. So you're going to get all of them in one card and perhaps not be able to tell which is valid. In, in some cases, it may be just that they're both completely valid, but just one has information the other doesn't have. Yes. So when I'm in merge, when I go to merge, this would come up. So I'm looking at 1326th Avenue. So if I hit merge, it would do that. Does it then automatically go to another or? Yeah, I, th I think so. I, th I think once you click on merge down here, not not this one, merge down here is going to merge those two. Yeah. And then this one down here should bubble up to the top. Very good. Okay. Do you want to do you want to try one of those? Sure. Why not? Let's do demonstrate. it. Demonstrate. Okay. Should Should I do it? Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, so that's showing us how it merged that one together. Yeah. Now scroll down. Okay. There's the next one. Right here, this A for M, right? Yeah. Okay. And that number over on the left, way up towards the left next to merge and fix, it now says 305. So each time you make a decision, that number is decreasing. Very good. This is very. This is a, a really uh, great tool to have. Absolutely. It'll clean it up tremendously. Yeah. Yeah. I've often thought about I have a lot of duplicates, but 
you know, who has the time to do anything like that. But this is a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. So I see I'm going to take the mouse for a moment. Okay. I see up here it says merge duplicates 179. Over here it's saying merge and fix 305. I'm going to speculate that the, the 305 isn't double this amount. Yeah, I'm wondering maybe <laughs> maybe there's some that has three or triplicate. Huh. I don't know. That I could be. Know. no, that could be Doug. You may have hit on it. Yes. Yeah. Go, can you go ahead and do one more and let's see what happens to yep. those two numbers, 305 and 179. Let's do, uh, I'm going to do out of bio there. Yeah, so they went, both went down one digit. Yeah, I'll do Alan North. Well, that's interesting. The merge duplicates is going down one digit at a time and the merge and fix is going down one digit at a time. I was thinking the merge duplicates would go down. Yeah. Well, one, and then the merge and fix would go down two. Well, it might. It oh well. It depends where I might have uh, three of one or something like that, or yeah. four of one, to my knowledge. Oh. Okay. Okay. So anyway, that's how that works. Beautiful. Oh, what does it say over here? Merge duplicates. 175 people with duplicate listings. Keep contacts up to date. Found new details for 126 people you've mm. contacted. <laughs> All right, whatever. Easy yeah. ways. Yeah, okay. So then coming back up here to contacts, we get back to your full list of contacts. And uh, that's going to bug me about switching that view because I don't like this view, frankly. I I liked your card view and outlook. E easier to read. Yeah, I, I, I thought so. You could see all the information about one contact within a small amount of real estate. For these, you kind of, your eyes have to spread across the whole screen. Um, anywho, let's let go of that and move along to the next subject. So right now we have five tabs open. I'm pointing to them up here. Yes. So the first three tabs automatically open and then we get a, a Google tab. So if you keep going through your day and you get more tabs open, what happens when you close Google Chrome and then reopen it, it defaults back to those f same four tabs, meaning the email and the calendar and the contacts and then the rest of your stuff. Or, the, the, the Google tab. Um, you can, as you're going through your day, if you just want to reduce the amount of real estate up here, you can close any of those tabs. When you close Google Chrome and reopen it, it's going to go back to those same four default tabs. And that's only because that's the way I've set it up. And if you want it different, then it can be changed. And I'll demonstrate where to change that. It's this kebab menu in the upper right corner. Yes. Three, three dots there. We call that the kebab menu because it kind of looks like a shish kebab. Mm -hmm. and then come down to settings. <clears throat> and then scroll all the way down. And we get this section here. Open a specific set of pages. So this is where it's programmed to open those four tabs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Over here, you have this bookmark for show apps. This is the Google Apps icon. When you click on that, um, you get the Google Apps. And here's uh, Gmail. Yeah, that doesn't have quite the same ones I was expecting. Here, if we take the tic-tac-toe board here. We get Gmail and calendar and contacts. So at any point, you could come into this tic-tac-toe menu and open any of those tabs this way as well. Okay, but normally if I'm, when I'm starting my computer, I'm just going to the uh, Chrome icon. Right. And that's opening up those four. 
Right. And as long as I feel comfortable with it, that's all I really need to be concerned about, correct? Yeah. And I think you recognize this opens a whole lot faster than what your outlook. I see already that it is, yes. Yeah. So when I'm in these four, like, so if I want to close Google, I, if I want to close any of those, I'm able to do that. It won't affect working in my email. That's right. Very good. Now, some other points that we haven't looked at yet, and maybe you'd like to just try it and see how it works, is actually opening a mail, replying to it, replying all that forwarding, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Do you want to experiment with one of those that you don't mind showing? Sure. Let's see here. Let's go down to... Uh... <clears throat> Actually, if we go down to, uh, see if I can find one here from Corinna, um, if I can, if not, uh, I'll go here. Okay. So I'm okay. in an email from Corinna. Yeah. And I'm just going to hit reply or forward. But, yeah. So you've got those reply and forward buttons. Yeah. Also in the upper right corner of that email, there's an arrow pointed upward diagonally. Yes. To the right. I think that'll open it as a separate window. Mm hmm Which you may find more comfortable for actually typing a reply or, or whatever. Sure. And then you can close it. And then there's also a kebab menu in the upper right corner of that email that would have some other choices. Mm-hmm. So that's where my uh, that's where my print would be for the yeah. emails, right? So if I'm going to hit reply, let's just so it's uh, so there's so okay, let's do this. So there's my message, and then I'm hitting. Uh, What am I? What am I hitting to send? Bottom left corner blue button that says send. Ah, oh, there it is. Okay, good. It's right there. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Now, what else? Okay, so now, um, okay, I've, I've got it. I've got it. I understand. As you float the mouse over the emails in in this panel over here, you see that garbage can that pops up and the the open envelope. Yeah, those icons up there, those give you options for doing different things. Mm-hmm. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And then the check boxes to the left of each of those mails. Yes. If you put check marks in a number of them, you could delete them as a as a batch. Yes. Okay. Um, if you click on one of those check boxes, then move your mouse down several messages and do a shift click, that would select a whole bunch of messages in um, sequence. Mm -hmm. And you can delete them all together by clicking the garbage can that's up above that list of emails. Okay. So there's all those little icons up there at the top of the list of emails. And those buttons, I'm going to point to them, those would act upon all the emails that you currently have checkmarked. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Yes. How about if you want to search for a particular email? You don't know when it was sent to you, but you know some kind of a word that was in it or who it was from. Can you see how to do that? So I'm going to uh, type in something in search email, right? So yeah. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's uh, a name. And as soon as you start typing, it gives you some suggestions. Yeah. So if this is the one I think it might be, I can just click on it, huh? Yeah. I'll give you a list of those, of emails that include that person. Right. Okay. Okay. 
There's also buttons right under that, so you could get only the emails that have an attachment and yeah. are from that person. Mm -hmm. Or what I got from him or what I sent to him. Yeah. Okay. And you can pick a date range. Where, where would the, where would, oh, the anytime is the date range. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Yes, perfect. Okay. Uh, yeah, click that X to remove what you typed in the search field. Do I need to hit inbox here to go up to the top? Yes. Okay. Okay, so let me have the mouse for a minute. I want to describe this area to you over here. Okay. In Outlook, you had a lot of subfolders immediately under Inbox, and you had some other subfolders that were listed down lower in, uh, on the left-hand panel in Outlook. Yeah. So I'm going to show you how to manage that. I kind of really like the way Gmail does this. Now, down here you have the word more. If you click on, I'm clicking on that right now. And now you can scroll down and see more folders down here. But notice, let's see, ACN 2009 is, well, that's still before these. Yeah, so I, I want to show you how to manage what folders show above the fold. And, yeah. and uh, let me let me interrupt you here. So I've okay. got all these files here, and most of these are old files. Yeah. Um, if this information is also in my um, is elsewhere, correct? I would have this information. File. These are duplicate files. No, no. These are email folders. Um, I'm not sure what you mean when you say duplicate. Well, I guess what I'm saying is that if we deleted all the files that were here, would any of this information be stored somewhere else? Files? No, no. If you delete them from here, you're deleting them from the Google storage and that's the only place they exist. Okay. Your Outlook was a duplicate of what was in uh, Gmail. So they they do at the moment still look exist in Outlook, but if you delete them from here and then launch Outlook, Outlook will synchronize with Google, which means they will become deleted from Outlook as well. Okay? okay. But what I want to show you is how to stop these from appearing here, which I think would probably be um, uh, suitable. So the way we're going to do that is come up here to the gear icon that's settings for your email and then come to see all settings right here this button yes and click on that and then this tab here that says labels now these don't really aren't visible as as tabs but each word up here when we click on that that changes the whole body of this page so they function like tabs. When I click on labels, all this down here changed. When I click on inbox, that's a place where we do settings changes for the inbox and so on. What we're interested here is labels. So what's happening now is, is these words right here correspond to these words out here. Do you see how they match? Important, important, sent, sent and if I scroll down here we see 200 West Bullard mm -hmm. and 200 West Bullard is over here right well it is showing right now if I click on hide notice that this 200 West Bullard will disappear got it okay mm -hmm. so this is a way that you can manage which folders you want displayed over here and I would think you'd only want the ones that are more commonly accessed. Well, I very rarely go into these folders here. Okay. Uh, 
you know, <laughs> m- many of them too are are so dated they could probably be deleted. They're, in fact, I bet you many of these photos, photos, many of these folders uh, have nothing in it. That very well could be. Um, there's a remove option here, so going through these here would be an easy way to remove them if you chose to take the time to do that. With using um, the Google Mail interface, there's no need to do that. You're not speeding up your computer by doing that. You would be if you were dealing with Outlook, if you were sticking with Outlook. Um, If you don't care about these folders out here and you rarely use them, then I just don't think this is even an issue for you to bother spending any time with. I think it should all be hidden. All right. Let's, um, I think up here at the top, let's see, there's, okay, show and label list. All of these, I think, are individually selected, and it seems to me that there is a place to hide them all. Let's see, categories. That's categories, show, hide, show and label list. Didn't I see a way to do them all? Contacts, tabs, not there. I'm going to make a liar out of myself. Mm -hmm. I'm just feeling it now. Um, Well, actually, sort of, we already have that. Let let me do this. This, uh, all of this stuff below the word less, there's, that's all your other folders. Right. So actually, by default, they don't show up until you click more. Mm -hmm. The only reasons these are here is because I configured them to show for demonstration purposes. So I think there's only three there and we turn those three off, then you've got everything hidden. Right. So, uh, let's see, 2009 Kiowa. 2009 Kiowa Media. So and hide that, that, any of these that have the black show. And that says, where it says messages, that says what's in those files. Uh, yeah, it says how many messages there are. Oh, good point. So that's an easy way to pick which ones to delete. Delete that. We can... So this ACN 2009, I can go ahead and click remove. Yeah. The same thing with the one above it. Yeah. Boy, it'd be cool if we can do multiples of these. Can I select multiples of them? No, I can't. Yeah. So what that benefits you by taking the time and trouble to go clean those up, it just means when you go do go expand the more section here, you don't have as much clutter to right. look through. Okay. So that finishes that piece of what I want to do. So the way we get out of this screen is just go click on inbox. Takes us back to the inbox. Oh, let's see, what was that? Toggle split pane mode. Oh, see how that just turned off the preview window? Yes. And then what was that one? Input tool. Yeah, I don't think that is anything of interest. Okay. Where was that toggle again? It was in the... Uh... This one here. Split pane mode. So these is like lines of the paragraph. These four yeah. lines are simulating lines yeah. of the paragraph. Got it. And so then now it's... Oh, I see what they're simulating is the left-hand side is the list of emails and the right-hand side is the preview. So we click on that if that's what you want. If you want the screen to show emails all the way across the screen, then you click on that. Yeah, no, prefer it the other way, yeah. Yeah. This way, yeah. The more outlook looking way. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. All right. So the next topic we need to go to if we're done with this is the topic of your OneDrive issue. Do you want to spend any more time in here? Any other questions? Regarding email, I think we're fine. I think uh, 
based on uh, what we talked about, seems like it should be uh, just fine. And, and I understand okay. it. Open All up right. and, I, and open up and it opens up the email. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then let's close that. Now this Outlook icon is, is still down here. If you launch it, it's going to take a long time for it to synchronize. And, and, and even then, it's still going to keep trying to fix those problems, so it's going to be sluggish. If we do migrate to your new computer, we can con reconfigure this so that Outlook will open quickly, but it won't have as much of your old mail. You would still have to go back to the Gmail interface to find your old mail. Comprende? Yes. All right. When you, when I had this computer in my lab, I noticed when I turned it on, it would always automatically launch Microsoft Teams. I turned off that automatic launch because I'm of the impression that you rarely use Microsoft Teams only when you're working with a client who needs that. That is correct. Okay. So you can still launch that manually. It just doesn't automatically launch when you start the computer. Um... Okay, so let's go talk about OneDrive. Um, your computer actually had three different cloud accounts that it has been involved with in its <laughs> sordid past. Um, the Google Drive is still active and I fixed a problem with that where it was not properly syncing and we got all that fixed so we don't need to discuss the Google Drive side of life but you also have OneDrive which has been apparently utilized in the past it appears to me that it hasn't been synchronized since 2017 which I'm guessing might be the time when you guys committed to Google Drive um, and and decided to drop OneDrive. Uh, there might be some other explanation for it, but there was a problem with that transition. It didn't get, uh, OneDrive didn't get cleanly shut down. Um, so what I've done here is I've opened your profile and I'm surprised to see this guy still here. I thought I deleted that. But your Google Drive, your current Google Drive is this one down here. This, this one we are so over with and done with. I'm going to see if I can just go ahead and delete that there. See, I think what had happened was that, um, and, and if I understand correctly, you know, in terms of that Google Drive, it was to be able to sync to Karenna. Yes, that's what it appeared to provide an easy way for you guys to share files and synchronize files. Yeah. So anything that uh, so she would have the main files. So I think it was set up that if I was uh, developing a document, that when I had a final document, it would go into her file. I don't think I was always being a good boy and doing that. I was filing it in my own files. Okay. So, so by doing what you're doing, am I not syncing to Karenna any longer? No, you are. You yeah. are syncing to Karenna. You definitely are. And that it was clear to me that that was your intention. Mm -hmm. That happens through Google Drive. However, um, because of a problem with your Microsoft Word configuration and Microsoft Excel configuration, those programs by default were saving to your OneDrive folder. And so she was not getting those files. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the piece that we need to figure out how to fix. Um, this guy's still trying to delete. I'm going to see if I can open another Windows Explorer. Yes. And we'll just let that one keep working in the background and deal with this one. So how to 
give you the idea of what's going on, I think probably the best way to go is, is with Microsoft Word. So I'm going to launch Microsoft Word, and we're going to take a look at some of your recent document saving locations uh, as a way of explaining this. So here's Microsoft Word, and we're looking right now at your recent documents. So this one right here is stored on the G drive, which you haven't seen the letter G before. That is now exists because of the fix that I did to your Google Drive. So anytime you see G drive, that's, that's a confirmation that this is the Google Drive. Now down here, this one, it was stored in the Google Drive not syncing folder. That was your Google Drive that was broken. Mm -hmm. And that no longer exists. So if you try opening this now, I expect that that's not going to open. However, we're still deleting that folder. That's what I was just doing is, is getting rid of this. I thought I already did that, but I guess I missed it. But that, so, that file, or that document does exist somewhere. Yeah, the document exists on the G drive okay. in its correct location. Okay. Um, and I'd like to actually go prove that. So we know that it is, you know, and I just clicked on that now, it's probably going to open because it's not deleted yet or might not be deleted yet. Yeah, so there it is. But that's not the one that we want because that is on the Google Drive that's not syncing. So now let's go find it in the correct location. Yeah, so what it's been doing so far is just calculating how much stuff to delete. So it's deleting 58,000 items right now, uh, 26 gigabytes. You're questioning right now how much you trust me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go look at this. Um, the thunder and hoping it's not... Uh... My house. Oh, right, right. Okay. So Inventi is the name of that document. Inventi was inside of a folder called Prospective Business, which mm -hmm. is inside a folder called Clients, which is inside a folder called My Documents. And it's now to be residing on the uh, G Drive. So let's go to Open and then Browse. I question myself how well I'm going to remember that path. So, G drive down here into my drive, my documents. Was it clients? Yeah, clients. Go to prospective business. Okay, I'm going to click on one of these and then type PR. It's fine. And then which one of these prepares? That one there. Let's try that one. This first one. Yeah. And, and go down to Inventia. I N here. Right. Yeah. That's the folder. Try that again. Yeah, I don't know which file it was. Do you, oh, is it no. still visible under here? Oh, it's probably a 21, probably dated 21. So I would mm -hmm. scroll down. I'm just looking here to see if we see it. Oh, Inventio BIOS. Was that it? Yeah, but in yeah, but in that uh, folder, yeah. Yeah, in here. So I'm going to click on one of those and type INV. There is, there it is. You see, there it is. So now if we double click on that. That's opening that file <clears throat> from the G drive. Mm -hmm. Does that look right? Yeah. All right. You can disable this anytime. <clears throat> if others are editing Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Excel, they can see you get alerts when it's safe to edit. You can disable this anytime. Google Drive settings. 
I'm inclined to. I, I think you probably haven't seen this before. This is probably because of the new Google Drive that I installed in order to fix this. Correct. I um, this. I'm figuring you probably don't need to see these kind of messages. Right. Okay, so let's see if this takes us right in there. Uh, show who is editing Office files. Let's remove that check mark and answer OK. Some changes require to restart. Fine. OK. And we'll close that document. Drive file stream is Google Drive for desktop. You can still access. All that disappeared on its own. Okay, so let's continue on our conversation from your recent files. So anything that says Google Drive not syncing, that's going to fail once it finishes deleting all of those obsolete files. And to find those files, you go through the G drive. Mm -hmm. um, you may not be comfortable with yet how to get to the G drive if you didn't follow the way I did it. Um, we'll come back to that if we need to. So scrolling down a little bit, there's more Google Drive not syncing. Now this one says 2019 active projects. It's indicating that it's stored on the desktop. Yes. So that's not stored in the G drive. Right. And it's not available to Corinna. It's more of a, a to-do list, my to-do list. Okay. So you intend for that to be on your desktop, right? Cool. Okay. Now you might be interested in that case about this thumbtack. Do you know what that does? I know. That pins it to this list so that it never cycles off of this list. Mm -hmm. Does that sound attractive to you, or is this not a way that you would use to get to it? You know, I would just normally just open it up uh, on my... Uh... From the desktop? Yeah. Okay, then we won't discuss that any further. So Google Drive not syncing, not syncing, not syncing. We don't care about those. And then here we have documents. As I float the mouse over this, there's that bubble underneath that says C colon backslash users backslash shelled backslash OneDrive. Mm -hmm. So this document is in the OneDrive folder. It's not stored to the Google Drive. It's not available to Corana. And that most likely occurred because you probably started that file in Microsoft Word and then when you saved it, it defaulted to the OneDrive location, probably without you being aware of that. Is that believable? Sure. Okay. So that needs to be fixed. We need to get everything out of this OneDrive and into Google Drive. But there's a challenge to that that I haven't got to explain yet. So, so Doug, let me ask this question. So yes. I, I have this document. Does Corinna have this document? No. Because it's in the OneDrive folder. Mm. She doesn't have access to that OneDrive folder. Okay. That OneDrive folder is specifically tied to your Microsoft account. And you guys, to my awareness, switched over to Google Drive some time ago so that you could more easily share documents between you. Mm -hmm. Because OneDrive wasn't doing that. Yeah. So if we go over here to More Documents, let's see what I get. Last week, Google Drive not syncing. Those are those. Let's see if we scroll down and get some more Google Drive. There's, so I think Boswell, is that the one we just talked about? Yes. Okay. So then here, social media strategy, same problem. It's on OneDrive. This one, new email passwords. This also is in OneDrive. This one that says NRCSI, that's in OneDrive. All of these that don't say Google, they're, we know they're going to OneDrive because that's the default for your Microsoft Word. We're going to change that. 
we're going to change the default so it defaults to the Google to the correct Google Drive. Okay. But I, what I need for you to see is that there's a lot of documents that are on OneDrive that we don't want there. As I scroll down, I'm seeing all Google Drive not syncing until I get down to here. Now the ones on the desktop, I'm figuring that you knew you intended for them to be on the desktop. Yes. Okay. So we're not going to worry about those. Then there's more Google Drive. So as far as recent documents go, it looks like there's not a whole lot of them that are in the OneDrive folder. Um, the question is, how much are there and how do we find them and how do we move them to where they belong? Um, at the moment, it's difficult for me to tell how many are there. Now here's this OneDrive personal right here. Let's see how that shows up this way. Email, no, that's not going to be very useful. These are folders that right. are in your OneDrive. Right. Okay. I think I'm going to, it's time for me to go to File Explorer. And, you know, I think these are in my OneDrive because I look at those files, you know, they are, a lot of those happen to be, you know, just per personal things that pertain to me and that Corana doesn't need that kind of information. Um, not to say that she can't have access to it, but uh, that's why I think we have a, and she probably has things that I don't, that I don't, can't get into either uh, or have a need to. Okay, well, let me expand your thinking a little bit because I think there's a little more to it than that. Um, here, I'm going to display the Google Drive on half of the screen and your OneDrive on the other half of the screen. So I'm holding down the Windows key and pressing left arrow and let go of the Windows key and choose this window to be on the right half of the screen. So on the left half of the screen, this is the um, G drive. See that G right there? Yes. So this is all from the Google Drive. On the right side of the screen, or the right corner of the boxing ring, <laughs> is the OneDrive folder. Yes. So looking through what's in here, we see a lot of the same folder names of what are on the, the Google Drive. Right. It's not a complete duplication. It's not a perfect duplication. So 1326th Avenue is on both of them. Yes. Uh, 2012 tax does not exist over here. Mm -hmm. 2013 does not exist over here. And then they're also on the left-hand side of the screen. If I come down to BDG car lease, that exists in the Google Drive, but it does not exist on OneDrive. Mm -hmm. So what it appears to me is that at some time back in history, and I'm guessing that was 2017, you see a lot of 2016 dates down here, that you guys copied everything you had on your OneDrive to the Google Drive and your intention was to, from there on out, use the Google Drive. But because the OneDrive still existed and because your Microsoft Word was still defaulting to the OneDrive, we still, we, we, we wound up with some files in here with more recent dates, 2020. Um, and if I sort this column by date, we get up here at the, the most recent date, January 2021, and then we got some stuff in 2020, 2019. So there's this much stuff in here showing 2017. Mm -hmm. 
that's not that's not overwhelming. Right. However, we're only seeing here files that are directly in the documents folder. If I resort this listing again to see these subfolders, we can't tell which of these subfolders might have documents in them that never got copied over to the Google Drive. Um, it could be that there's very little, but at the moment I don't know. Um, I've got it in my mind that I can use a synchronizing software that will scan through all these folders and pull out or show us all of the files that have dates 2017 and more recent. And then if we find that those don't exist over here, well, we just copy them over here and then we shut down this OneDrive. Mm -hmm. um, the, um, the possibility that there's files that you guys intend should not be accessible by each other or shared to each other. I think there's probably ways for us to handle that within Google Drive and it'd be healthier to have everything in the Google Drive atmosphere or at Google drive -a sphere <laughs> Is that a word? Yes, it is now. Uh, <laughs> I think it should be in the Google Drive. I, I would think yeah. so. Yes. Yeah. And because there's all this, this OneDrive stuff, that's all a duplication and it's... Yeah all taking up space. If I right click on documents over here and choose properties, uh, it's eventually going to show us how much is too many too occupied in there. It's just a lot of wasted space. Yeah. Um, now, one of my concerns and a reason to actually talk through this with you is the possibility that Files in this side, in the OneDrive side, have been modified since 2017, where that same file has been modified on this side since 2017, and both files have modifications that you guys care about. And mm -hmm. if I just use a program to take the most recent date, is there a potential that we're going to get somebody upset by wiping out some kind of data that we needed to keep. Well. And if that's a possibility, there's measures that I can take to protect against that. Yeah. You know, the chances are everything that's, um, you know, I, I'll give myself some cushion in there. Uh, you know, if everything that's, uh, uh, you know, 2015 and older, if we lose that data, it's probably okay. And it's probably old enough that you don't really care about. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. All right. All even, right. Even if I have a larger cushion, say, let's go back. Well, you know, here we are in 2021. I can't uh, think about uh, how often I may have gone back to something uh, past 2015. It's, been, it's rare. Yeah. Okay. Well, that gives me a little bit of guidance. So now what we should do is go fix the default storage location for your Microsoft Word. So the way we'll do that is come to options and save. And right here is the default file location. This is showing OneDrive documents. So if I click on the browse button, I'm going to come over here to the G drive into my drive, into my documents, yeah. and that's going to be our default location. Yes. So that's where I would find all of my recent documents. Um, as you move forward, yes. Um, and actually, right as it exists right now, have I... Yeah, no, the recent documents that were stored in OneDrive have not yet been moved to the Google Drive. So, uh, no, you're not going to find your recent documents there pr prior to today. Okay. 
Uh, you will eventually once we get this all fixed. Okay. And when you say eventually, that means when? Within within days. Okay. Although yeah. there are some documents I would need have, have to have access to immediately. Oh, you still have access to them. Okay. You have access to them immediately. It's just that you right immediately you're going to be still accessing them from OneDrive. Okay. Now this. Um, we need to fix anything that has OneDrive. So server drafts location, offline editing options, saving checked out files, no longer supported, checked out files are now saved to office document cache. I don't see that you would even be using this at all. I want to see if I can, if it will let me delete that. I don't think that's going to be of any consequence. Um, there's another place here that deals with file locations, almost to the bottom here, up a little bit. Do, 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 do. Wait a minute, did I miss it? Oh, file locations right here. It's grayed out. Why is that grayed out? There it is. It was grayed out just because I didn't have any document on screen. Uh, okay, so this documents and OneDrive only exists on this line. So we'll modify that and go to G, my drive, my documents. And that'll do it. Go right back in and make sure that change stuck. So now if I go to save a new document and click on the save button up here, right here, it's showing OneDrive. <laughs> Oops, it wasn't supposed to do that. Okay, let's exit Word. Don't save and then relaunch it. Maybe I have to relaunch it before that change takes effect. Well, Click document. Ugh. That still says default. Did one of those changes not stick? Okay, take a look here, advance, file locations, G, my drive. If I come up here to save, uh, here, G, my drive. Come here to save as. This is showing OneDrive over here, personal other locations, pinned folders this week. Love, do, 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 do. If I do browse, it goes to the G. Do you want to share more options? Just goes into there. Save as default location. Ha, I have never seen this option here. 
it looks to me like this is like the new way to change the default for that save icon up there in that toolbar. I was, did not know that. <laughs> That's what I love about my job. Learn something new every day. <laughs> Good gollies. I did not know that. <laughs> All right, go try another one. And go to save that new document. And there it is, the G drive. And the alternative, first alternative is that OneDrive folder. Wow. That is, that is surprising that I could change the default setting in two places on the options menu and that one place still has to be fixed. Hmm. Ugh. All right. Microsoft, you'll be the death of me yet. <laughs> okay. So now you also use Excel, don't you? Yes. Okay. I don't see an Excel icon anywhere. Oh, yes, I do use Excel. Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to hit the Windows key and then type EXC, and that gives me Excel. You probably launch Excel just by double clicking on an actual Excel document. Correct. And then here we see there's a bunch of them on the uh, desktop. There's some on uh, in that not not syncing location, which those should fail to work for you. I think we've got those all deleted now. So I'm going to try launching one of those. Yeah, couldn't find it. So do you understand how to go find it? They're all in G. They're in the G. Yeah, they're all in G. So whatever this sequence is here, you go to G, and uh, then Baker Dillon Group and Shauna Media List, and then find the file name. Uh, easy for you to say. Go to G. From from what point? Okay. Good. good fair question. Come up here to open, and then to browse. Ah. And then here's G. Mm -hmm. Now, actually, is this G already? Where is that D? No, I haven't changed the default for Excel yet. Where was that looking? Oh. Okay, so do you remember where that one was we were talking about? I was, was it one of these? No, it was. I don't know where that was. Oh yeah, it was, it was one of those because those are the only ones on this list. Uh, so, oh yeah, it was my documents and then Baker Dillon and we can't see the rest of that line now. Um, probably, probably under, I'm going to guess CBD. Hmm. I don't see CBD. Yeah. All right, well, let's cancel this and come back and look. When I flip the mouse over that, it extends out. Uh, Shauna Media List, HubSpot. That could be too. Okay, so browse. Um, I haven't used that document all that much. That's why I don't remember what I titled it. All right. Shauna Media Lists. And then here's those HubSpot. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it's all okay. so it's always an open browse G. Yeah. Now, um, open br uh, browse, let's see, add a place. Can we, well, that only works for OneDrive. All right, so let's fix this. Go to advance, just like we did with Microsoft Word. And Actually, now I don't think Excel has that same option in this advanced list. It handles it all within this 
save option, default file location, and Excel doesn't give us that browse button, so I've got to go grab that path by going to the G drive and then double click my drive, double click my documents, click up here in this address bar, control C to copy that path. Don't even attempt to remember what I just said. Okay. <laughs> and then in here, I'll control V to paste that. So that gives us the G drive, my documents. Now, let's, we're in Excel, let's start a new workbook, type a big complex spreadsheet, and then go save it. And here it's showing G, my drive, my documents. So Excel <laughs> behaved and ex recognized my changes. And let's see if I do another new. Yeah, that's good. All right, now another piece that I need to go deal with is in Windows Explorer, this document's up here. Where is that pointing to? Is it going to OneDrive or is it going to Google? So I'll right click on Documents, choose Properties, go to Location. This is still going to OneDrive. So I'm going to click on Move. Now, files in the Documents folder are stored in the target location below. You can change where files in this folder are stored to another place on this hard drive, another drive, or another computer on your network. If I choose Move, and then come to here, Google Drive, My Drive, My Documents. Where we want those to go. Select that folder so that changes that path. So that means I think when I click OK here we're going to see this list of folders change a little bit because we know that it was a different list of folders mm -hmm. between the OneDrive and the G drive and these are actually coming to us or displaying to us from the OneDrive side. All right, do you want to move all of the old files from the old location to the new location? No, we don't. Thank you very much. So it's showing us the old location, showing us the new location. We recommend moving all the files so the programs needing to access the folder's content can do so. Well, we know better because we're our reason for doing this is unusual. We're trying to fix a problem that occurred in the past. So we're not going to move the files. Can't move folder because there's a folder in the same location that can't be redirected, access denied. Oy, caramba. I'm going to have to research that a little bit. Somewhere we need to get that document's quick access to point to the right location. At the moment, I'm not sure how to do that. So the main thing that I needed to accomplish with you today regarding this issue is to get a feel from you about the significance of the files that might be in that OneDrive folder that have not made it to the Google Drive folder and what to do with potential conflicts. And I feel like I've had enough conversation with you about that for me to be able to take the next step with it. And this next step is something that we need to accomplish before we can implement your new computer, if you wind up choosing to do that. Um, 
because if we didn't, then these files that are in the OneDrive folder on this old computer would never get carried forward to the new computer. Do you follow that? I do follow that. And okay. my response. Yeah. That uh, a few of the problems that we may have been having, uh, we may have been able to fix. So for one, uh, I have a pretty clear picture right now from what I can see here. And um, so doing any um, video podcasting or other Zoom meetings, I think that that may have been solved. I've got the new uh, webcam here. And as you said, you cleaned off the, uh, was it the lens of the video screen? So I think we, we took care of that. Um, the um, going to Gmail. Yeah. It looks pretty, pretty simple. Uh, to follow all that by taking a little while to learn some of the icons, but overall, uh, sending, receiving, opening, closing, deleting, forwarding, pretty much the same. Uh, what I'm thinking is um, whatever else we might need to clean up, uh, maybe I don't need a new computer and I save uh, $1,200. Sure. Give it to you. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, looks, that looks very feasible. Yeah. The, uh, the only thing that's missing by sticking with your old computer is not being able to do virtual backgrounds. Which you don't like. Which I don't like. No, but... <laughs> you... and, and I have to tell you that, uh, you know, this background here, which I've never used for any of the uh, meetings or interviews, looks pretty good. I think you... It you does. Such, yeah. And it gives you good lighting. You've got lighting from your window. Right. Now, of course, that's only during daylight. Right. Uh, I don't know what you're going to be look, faced with when you uh, have nighttime. Well, I have other lighting, uh, any other artificial lighting, which I can yeah. add. And this webcam that you have now does a much better job of compensating for low light conditions than the built-in camera. The, the built-in camera, you mentioned I, I, I cleaned that off, yes, but you're not using that camera now. Yeah. That camera was built in to the monitor on your laptop and it's way down at the bottom by the keyboard yes. which i just i just don't understand who thought that would be a good idea um and it was a lower resolution camera mm -hmm. and uh, has less capabilities of compensating for low light so I, I think this webcam will do you a good job so I think you ought to work with this, uh, the old computer, at least for a number of days. You still have a little time before you decide to return the new laptop. Right. And be sure there isn't some other compelling reason. But I don't, I don't see another compelling reason at this point. Right. Yeah, the, the other computer is a little bit faster, technically speaking. Will you ever actually experience a speed improvement that? means anything to you. The sluggishness that you were having was mostly due to the Outlook illness or mm -hmm. problems. And even then, and even then it was something that, uh, you know, I, I came to live with. And yeah. so if, if you've been able to speed things up to the point that you have, uh, you know, it'll be, it'll be a godsend. So, all right. right. Um, so yeah, let me let me play with it. Let me look for the documents that I'm going to need uh, here. Uh, I'll probably have some questions in the next day or so. Uh, thank you for giving me a vacation of not having a, a computer <laughs> with it for, the last, for yeah. the last five days. Yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, I've had no client crisis uh, here to take care of, but I do have a couple documents that I will need to to get to and uh, and respond to uh, or for the remainder of the week. So uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Let, let me just, just let me clarify one more thing. So my old documents that I need to have access to are still in C. Yes. They're still in C. Well, yes, they're, they're, um, actually you should be going to that G drive for, sure. for, for all of your documents. Okay. The yeah, uh, the ones that were listed in the in the C drive within the OneDrive folder, those at this point they should all be giving you error messages if you try to open those. Fair so enough. if you go to try to open something and you get an error message, just go try to find that file on the G drive. 
Okay. And, and you should be fine with that. Any of your files that are stored on the desktop are still there, should still be there. I haven't looked at them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, fingers crossed. Um, but I think it's I think it's a good plan for you to just go ahead and work with it for a few days. And I'll um, still be needing to come back at some point remotely to um, deal with those uh, OneDrive files. And I think I, I'm going to do a little bit of research to see how I want to uh, what's a good way to do that, because I'm pretty sure I can. Uh, find an appropriate tool or maybe already have one. I just want to make sure that it will do the mix that I, that I need. Because one of the complications is the files that are in your OneDrive folder, they're on OneDrive in a subfolder called My Documents. On the G Drive, it's the G Drive, My Documents, and then your company name, and then I think another folder under there. So that's the level that I need to do that synchronization, which I think is doable. I just, let's give you a few days to work with it and then we'll take the next step. Fair enough. Doug, okay. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Did you want any other conversation after I stopped the video or are you, or do you think we're done? No, I think we're done. I think we're done. Again, I just need to, to work with everything here and uh, I'll, I'll let you know. Okay. Okay. Very good. So just go ahead and click the end button in the bottom or leave button in the bottom right corner on your screen and All that'll right. take you out this of the session. That's it. Okay. All right. Goodbye. All right. So that was the orientation session and uh, finish up with some issues so that Sheldon can get into working with his old laptop. And I'm just doing a couple other clicks to end my remote connection to his computer. So if you'd like to request a free computer support session with me, send an email to dougbetts at livewindowstraining.com. Give me an idea in the body of the email, what you'd like to have help with, and uh, we'll put it together. Now you're seeing some strange light on my face right now. I'm going to show you what the view out my window, my, my window is like right now because uh, it's no longer raining, no longer thunder, and I still have that shade open. Okay, so I hope this is useful to you. Have a great day. Catch you later. Goodbye.